Located on the banks of the mighty Mississippi is the Science Museum of Minnesota. It is a nonprofit organization that has a lot to offer to its visitors. The museum's mission statement is to turn on the science, realizing the potential of policymakers, educators, and individuals to achieve full civic and economic participation in the world. With the lofty goal of their mission, they must employ as many teaching methods as there are artifacts in their collection. According to Breitbart and Swinyarski, there are three main learning styles, constructivism, develop, developmentalism, and behaviorism. In the pursuit of science for everyone, the museum does not only incorporate one method, but all three to make sure everyone can get their science on. With constructivism at its core, people are able to explore the museum and discover things on their own. The institution provides programs combining many subjects including science, art, drama, and literature to engage visitors in ways that allow them to actively explore, examine, and discover different concepts by themselves. The exhibits are designed in a way to scaffold the visitor through, so visitors of any age can actively participate in the pursuit of science. Museum personnel are present to actively participate in the visitors' discoveries by guiding them throughout their learning and helping them form questions. Through, through exhibit scaffolding the help and the help of the personnel, you can see visitors actively going through the four stages of Kolb's cycle of learning. Visitors experience the concrete information presented in front of them, observe and reflect on it, form abstract concepts, and put this information to use in further situations. Sometimes, visitors are presented with a question they cannot answer or do not know how to. This is when the museum personnel switch gears and adopt a developmentalist approach. As discussed in class, the role of the developmentalist teacher is to observe the learner's interests and then provide correct modeling for the student's behavior. The museum provides programs called learning labs for students who want to dive deeper into the depths of their exhibits such as weather or the human biology. In the bio lab when doing DNA extractions, students take on the role of being a scientist and actively go through the scientific method. For many visitors, this may be their first time in an actual lab setting. That is why this area of the museum has dedicated personnel where they are masters of that field. They are there to guide visitors through the lab process. Throughout these learning labs, safety is a key theme. Museum personnel adopt a behaviorist approach by constantly condition, conditioning visitors in the form of operating conditioning to actively follow safety procedures. Even though the central theme is a constructivist view, the museum also supports behavioralist teachers in their education endeavors by providing teaching guides explaining several themes presented throughout the museum. With this key tool, the behaviorist teacher can prepare his or her students for the museum trip in their own classroom and stress the information they see as important and correlates with their curriculum. These teaching guides can also be adapted and used by teachers with any education philosophy. As discussed in class, the world is not black or white. There is a gray area. Just as the world's cultures meet there, so do the ideas of realism and idealism. The museum's main mission of turning the science on is an idealist view. However, it employs realist tactics, as well as to get people involved and experience science as it relates to its Twin Cities community. Realism can be seen through the sensory experiences that welcome visitors to the museum and interest young students from the beginning to encourage them to start exploring and engage in what it has to offer. Idealism is used through realistic attractions that lure the students into the institution where idealistic learning experiences educate the students they believe is worth learning or what interests them. The entire institution is set up in a way to allow students and visitors to learn. This aspect of the museum's environment is geared for student-centered learning. Visitors in the museum are free to explore for themselves and engage themselves in any exhibit that piques their interest or that they feel the urge to learn more about. In regards to the student-centered learning, the education philosophies of existentialism and romantic naturalism present themselves in the exhibits. This freedom to explore on your own, according to Breitbart and Swinyarski, relates to existentialism, where learners are self-determined and in the pursuit of self-awareness and self-actualization. The museum provides an informal education that leads existentialist learners to use their knowledge and process skills to make information to make informed decisions and responsible choices that lead to building caring communities and improving society. 
refocusing on the self-exploration constructivist core principle of the museum. Romantic naturalist learners are supported here as well. According to the classroom discussions, the learner focuses on things they wish to focus on and choose what they want to do. Through this natural potential is a fo folded, unfolded. Education professionals can also utilize many of the museum's resources to center their students learning based on students learning based on their knowledge. This can be seen through the online teaching guides or through homeschool programs that put the student with a teacher to supplement their required sciences with education through a knowledgeable professional. Through the program Science Live, the worlds of student-centered teaching and teacher-centered collide into a subject-centered learning experience. In this program, the museum employs a master in a field such as chemistry to put on an interactive show of science. In this, both performer on stage and the audience actively work together to discover new things about science. Now these programs did not just appear out of thin air. There has been a long transformative history behind it geared towards bringing not only education of the sciences, but other subjects to the Twin Cities area and all of the state. Like all great things, the Science Museum started with a humble idea. In 1906, a group of St. Paul businessmen met to, to discuss just that. Charles W. Ames and Thomas Irvin came together to create the St. Paul Institute of Science and Letters. It would not be called the Science Museum of Minnesota until later. The collection was mostly comprised through gifts from wealthy families. The institution moved in 1927 to Miriam Mansion, located on Capitol Hills, where more was added on to the building for even more space. The museum moved again in 1964 to a larger building on 10th Street, where it was officially renamed the Science Museum of Minnesota. It made more expansions throughout the 70s to make room for its ever-growing collection, but this was not good enough. It finally moved to a brand new location big enough to house all of its collections in 1999 to the waterfront area and has been there ever since. Throughout the history of the Science Museum, it has always held the idealistic view of the pursuit of knowledge for everyone. Horace Mann's common schools were a place for all where children could get an education. The Science Museum holds this philosophy near and dear as a public institution offering many educational opportunities to the masses. However, like the debate for equal rights in education, there isn't a simple solution. Just how Du Bois wanted instant change, so did people within the museum. They wanted to bring science to everyone. However, this goal was almost impossible, so instead they had to adopt an approach that Booker T. Washington took kinder to, a gradualist approach. In Jewels on Schools, author Julia Williams states, However, the other sets, the expectations of us as parents or professional educators are not so written in stone. They should be open to challenge and revision. This quote explains the importance of flexibility in teachers and how their expectations may change as time goes on. As this goes for teachers, it also relates to the museum and it having to make changes over time to become the first class institution it is today. The museum constantly researches and utilizes new, new technology to keep the institution up to date, while also making alterations based on visitors' wants, needs, and preferences to ensure that it always provides current and effective educational resources. Also relating, Sir Ken Robinson's lecture, Changing Paradigms, where many education systems are designed to work in a time other than the present, the museum develops its own educational system to always be relevant to its present visitors. Transformative characteristics presents itself in its ever-changing physical development and intellectual development, but it is not exclusively transformative. The Science Museum of Minnesota also respects education in a transmissive fashion that holds ideas and information to the past near and dear. Remembering history and present philosophy is important because to have an understanding of the future, we need to have an understanding of the past. With the past in mind, the Science Museum is constantly trying to bring people science that is current and up to date. These values can be identified throughout their curriculum. Okay. Just so you know. So seriously, slow down. It's not a big deal. Okay. The museum's overt curriculum can easily be identified in its mission statement and their exhibits. The first thing mentioned in the mission statement is turn on the science. As a museum, its main interest is to educate visitors on principles and ideas of science, and each exhibit has its own personalized overt curriculum, 
clearly defining and explaining what each exhibit is about and what its visitors should take away. They have exhibits for almost every interest, including weather exhibits, human physiology, paleontology, geographical, ecological, and cultural and historical. Hidden within the curriculum are ideas not overtly stated in the primary learning objectives of every exhibit, but other learning opportunities the museum wishes their visitors to take away. Their visitors, and especially younger children, can learn about teamwork, problem solving, formulating ideas and opinions, and discovering passions and personal interests. In early days of the museum, null curriculum would include controversial scientific ideas like evolution or the creation of the universe. However, today the museum approaches these still controversial topics with a purely scientific view. Their main goal is to simply spread scientific information and ideas, rather than influence and contradict other beliefs. Although the museum does not openly reward its visitors with handed out prizes for learning, it does reward them with the occasional extrinsic treasure that they have created at experiment stations or for getting involved in the scientific process. While the children get to take home some physical objects every so often, the prime reward, prime reward is the intrinsic value. While wandering throughout the museum, absorbing all the information with their eyes and ears, they bring back home with them facts and information taken away from exhibits they had a connection with. This institution is an ethical institution that follows a strict code of ethics and values the learner as their main purpose for existence. To protect the learners in a safe and friendly environment that respects each individual's beliefs and values, they also wish to protect the learners outside of the museum with their project entitled Project Leave No Waste, which is, which is their mission to better dispose of their own waste to create a more environmentally safe future. The Science Museum of Minnesota is a very important educational institute in the Twin Cities area and in the entire state. It provides, it provides visitors, and especially students, a unique opportunity to engage in learning outside of the classroom. It is stated by Julia Williams, it is easy to assume that our students are provided sufficient opportunities to expand horizons in the classroom. That assumption is insensitive. The museum is necessary in the 21st century teaching because it indeed expands students' horizons in a different way from their schools. Most people cannot achieve full learning potential from one institution. That is why this institution is an important place where visitors can expand their knowledge in a fun, safe, and engaging way. The Science Museum will always be there to turn on the science.